what up YouTube, Big Red here, and on this video I'll be taking you through painting a soul red Mazda. So first of all I'm just going to chuck some wet on wet or sealer on this new door. For this particular variant for the Soul Red, it's uh, recommended to be painted over a G6. For those who don't know what a G6 is, um, basically they just you've got different shades of grey, ranging from G1 right through 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. G1 being almost pretty well white and G7 being pretty much almost black. And the idea of these as well is, as most colours these days are quite transparent, the um, G coats help give you a bit of a tone really for your colours and also they just help with coverage as well. So I'm just using a G6 water base ground coat I'm doing this on the adjacent panels just to make sure that each one of my um, panels starts the same and finishes the same I have mentioned before you know I don't always put an undercoat on my adjacent panels but with these transparent colors and colors like soul red and that I find it's an important part of the process to ensure colour accuracy when putting the panels back together. So first of all we're just starting off with a bit of a ready pinky metallic ground coat and from there we'll be putting a like a red pink dye over the top and that's essentially the, the candy coats it's important with this as well guys when laying down your undercoats and whatnot, especially the like three layers and candy colours, you want them to dry reasonably quick. Um, you also don't want them to stay wet for a long time because you could end up skinning the top of the, the colour off but underneath, underneath sorry, it stays wet which will cause problems later on because especially like you know with the water base and that all that all that water is trapped inside your paint job and eventually it's, it's got to go somewhere and it's caused delamination problems you know problems of the paint not adhering properly bubbling blistering just so many many issues can arise if you don't dry your color coats out fully and obviously the more layers you've got to put on the longer it stays wet for each time you add an extra layer it'll, it'll just take that longer to dry so it's just very important to make sure you allow for proper drying times there's no point rushing it because it can be a very expensive fix So on this one guys, all I did was a, a nice, um, fairly wet, even double coat 
for colour at two turns out on the fluid tip at about 1.3, 1.4 bar. And now all I've gone and done is wound my needle in so it's one and a quarter turns out. I've dropped my pressure down to about 1, 1.1 bar. I'm just giving it a quick double drop coat just to help lay the metallics out nicely. Make sure everything's even, no model. It's very important because when you put the candy coats over the top, any imperfections you have in this the under this undercoat here, it um, will show straight through. And then the only way to fix it is to start again. You gotta be careful too with this. I notice when painting this that the metallic in the ground coat tends to travel quite far. And especially if you're trying to blend this color out like I am, you don't want your metallics traveling all the way basically through your blend panel and possibly out to the end of the other side of the blend panel because then you're just gonna to have to coat the whole panel with candy to cover up the colour that's travelled so it's just important when doing this and blending it out to try and keep it all as close together as possible. That being said sometimes it's not that easy but you just do what you gotta do and make it happen. And that's the the pink transparent candy there on the dye. All it is is a clear base coat. So for the PPG Enviro base, that's the T490, and then you've got your different reds and whatnot mixed into it. And it's quite the 490 490 clear base coat dilutes the other colours quite well. So it just makes it very transparent and very see-through. So you'll see there that my first coat of candy there only just covered the edge of my metallic undercoat and then my second coat of candy there I've just brought it a bit further past and kind of like blending metallic I've just I've flicked it out a bit making sure once past my ground my metallic ground that as I've pulled it past I've triggered off but I haven't just on off with the trigger I've slowly released it so as as I'm the further away from my metallic undercoat I'm going as I'm going further away from it I'm releasing the trigger more and more to the point where I finally trigger off and it just means that there's le less paint going on the panel so it just it makes it more transparent basically I mean best way right this second on the top of my head I can try and explain it to you but this colour was a good match and it just required one double coat of candy over the top you will see around my tape edges there you can see where the candy bit of overspray is just hitting towards the edge um, it can make a difference with your colour but the way I've painted this the very tiniest little of overspray that has you know come around to the, the edge of the panel it hasn't made a colour like hasn't changed the colour at all there's not really any difference at all and a lot of that's got to do with how transparent this dye is as well, which makes it a lot easier sometimes. I found too, when applying the candy for Soul Reds, it's important to make sure you are very consistent and put it on fairly wet. I mean, you don't want to drown the panel and make it really heavy and gluggy 
but you want it to be nice and wet when it's nice and wet you can see when if you're being even or not as well sometimes when it's a bit dry like if you don't put it on quite quite wet enough um, you do get a bit of patchiness as well And with the inside of this door, I only put one coat of candy on there, I didn't put a double coat, and that's because from factory, prior to masking up and painting this car, when I had a look inside, it was, most, it was mostly just the metallic ground coat that you could see, but when doing a spray out and before applying the candy over the ground coat, I put the card up to the inside of the edges of the car to see if it had any candy on it at all and the colour was slightly different which showed me that it needed some candy on there but it didn't need a hell of a lot because it's obviously just from factory the overspray from the candy that's gone into those edges it's not actually fully covered You may look at this and think that I'm putting a lot of candy inside that door, but I'm actually not, and I'm putting it on a bit lighter than I was on the outside of the door and outside of the car as well. Just drying it off there with the 3M sun gun, and I'm sorry with the air blower while checking it with the 3M sun gun, just making sure that you can't see my blends, can't see any of the ground coat through the top coat there. You can see it's still quite wet, and it's giving it that purpley, milky look. Once it dries out, that will disappear. As you can see now it's all dry, just going around just checking to make sure everything's nice and even before I clear it. See if I had an issue or something arose in where I'm at at this stage, I would most likely have to dry it right out, make sure it's completely dry and then start again from my metallic ground coat stage. As you can see there, I'm moving fairly quickly. The gun is, I mean, it's reasonably close to the panel, but it's not that close for me. And I'm keeping it very even as well, just trying to make sure, I'm trying to reproduce that tight Mazda pill, whereas they look nice and shiny, but they're actually quite dry and quite peely. So I'm trying not to put too much clear on there at all, just enough to seal it off, make it shiny, 
but I don't want it to start flowing out and getting all gluggy because I've tried to make a showroom finish when that's not what we're trying to achieve here. Making sure too, keeping that gun square to the panel, or oh, sorry, the, well, the fan pattern square to the panel. This ensures nice even spray. Look at that. I think this is a great colour, especially when the sun hits it. It's very vibrant, it looks great. I don't think much of it when it's in the shade, but each to their own. You can see it's blended out quite nicely. A lot of people would have said, well, why not just paint the whole rail up the top there? And yeah, to be honest, probably could have. Would have avoided doing a pillar blend and blending the quarter for the colour, but at the end of the day, maybe what, 100 more mils of paint at the most, still saving money. Saving time, less pain I have to dry, less pain I have to apply. Yeah, just so you all know as well, I've got the 1.2 tip on this SATA 5000 RP and it just helps having the smaller tip gives it a lot of finer atomization so you may think I'm pumping it on but due to the fact that it's such a fine atomization and I've only got my fluid out two turns it's, it's actually a really good setup and it doesn't apply a lot of material at all. Helps stop overloading the panel, creating clear issues, and also saves product as well. So it's great, I love it. Well, I hope you've liked watching this one, guys. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to tell your friends, make sure they subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already please subscribe, hope you've enjoyed it guys and uh, look forward to producing another one for you guys soon, have a good one.